Ocean's 8 is directed by Gary Ross and stars Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, and tons of talent, and is about Debbie Ocean, the sister of Danny Ocean, formerly played by George Clooney, and a heist that herself and a crew are trying to pull off at the New York City Met Gala. Before I go any further with the review, I want to make sure you guys stay tuned for the end of the video when I talk about Skillshare, which is a fantastic learning platform for filmmakers, writers, editors, animators, a lot of really great stuff on there, so stay tuned. So Ocean's 8 is in fact a sequel to the original trilogy that was helmed by Steven Soderbergh, the first being a remake of the 1960s film with Frank Sinatra. And I've said this before, but I'll say it again, Ocean's Eleven and John Carpenter's The Thing, those are my two favorite remakes. I think that Soderbergh did a fantastic job with that original film, and the sequels weren't as good, but they were at least watchable. Uh, the third one was better than the second. So I was happy to learn that this film was not a reboot or a remake of the original, and that it's actually a sequel taking place within that world. That being said, the film feels pretty much like a reboot or remake of the Soderbergh film in almost every single way. Uh, the opening scene is Sandra Bullock at her parole meeting and the camera's faced on her and you just hear the voices of the parole officers in the background and they ask her what she would do if she was released, just like in Soderbergh's original film. And I was disappointed to see that this film follows a beat-for-beat -beat formula of the first film. In every way, it is the first movie, just with a different cast. It never tries to be its own thing. They basically took the blueprint that was set up in Soderbergh's film, changed the cast, gender, and instead of money, it's jewels. Now, I don't want to say that that means this film is bad. I certainly am not saying that. I'm just noticing the comparisons and the fact that it is so drastically obvious that they were basically pacing around an office when they were writing this script and comparing what the first one did, beat for beat, and trying to recreate that, which is disappointing. That being said, this film is very breezy and super watchable. The cast is phenomenal. Everyone works well with one another. Sandra Bullock, as usual, is extremely charming. She's always been fantastic, as is Kate Blanchett. I would say I was most concerned about Rihanna being in the film because she is the one that seems to have the least experience out of this extremely A-list cast. And she was fine. You know, her, her role as a hacker who doesn't really like to talk that much kind of is perfect. And um, she, she didn't bother me in the movie. No one really did. Everyone is good. It's a beautiful looking movie. Something I specifically noticed was all of the wardrobe choices. Their dresses, the outfits they wear, even when they're planning the, the heist. They, they all have like these really amazing outfits. And that's not usually something I pay attention to. And that means that it was really good. It shot well, but nowhere near as well as what Soderbergh did with his trilogy. This movie feels like it's trying to be a Soderbergh film. Which I guess makes sense if you view it from the lens of Gary Ross tried to make a film that fits within a franchise and so we understand the feel and you can watch them all back to back and it feels like it fits. But it also feels like someone who is aping Soderbergh style. It's not like a blatant thing, but there's a lot of zooms and a lot of wides that last for a very long time just like Soderbergh. And so it's not like Soderbergh necessarily owns that but it just couldn't escape the fact that it didn't feel like it was its own film. It's always weird when I see a film like this because aesthetically, it's fine. Everyone's good. It looks good. They're charismatic and charming and they all have good chemistry. The music is jazzy and upbeat. It feels like a fun caper movie, but it also feels like a fun caper movie that we've seen three times already and not as good as those times. Well, it's probably better than Ocean's 12. I think to make a film like this better, you have to make it not so easy to compare it to the others because that's gonna do it a disservice. You know, when you make a sequel, especially a fourth film in a franchise, you want it to feel like it's kind of its own thing if you're going to do such a big cast change like this and barely have any of the original crew involved. You have to kind of make it feel like it's its own thing or it has some vitality of its own. And beyond the fact that the cast is different, it doesn't. Just about everything in the movie is exactly like the others. And so it's going to draw those comparisons. And it's not as good as the original. It doesn't have as good of a villain as Andy Garcia, not even close, or as Pacino in Ocean's 13. And so the heist doesn't really have that much intensity to it either. It's just people walking around, smirking, wearing amazing dresses and awesome clothes with great jazz music and a lot of really expensive looking stuff. And there's A-list stars walking in and out of frame, having cameos that, and you're like, oh, there's that person. Okay, there's that. Oh, they're all in the movie, I guess. And I guess that's just supposed to blind us to the fact that the script doesn't really have anything new to say or do. 
I feel like this film could have been so much better if they found a way to make it its own thing. And if they can't, then just don't make it at all. But I gotta say, I could watch the film. Like, it was enjoyable. There, There's never a moment, as I said, where I was like, I hate this movie. I hate being here. I don't want to watch the rest of the film. It's not hard to watch a movie with Sandra Bullock, Kate Blanchett, Anne Hathaway, and all these amazing stars. It's really not hard. It makes it easy because you have so much talent on screen and everything looks pretty nice. It's just that there's really not that much there. And it, it's tough to really justify why the film exists. And I try to look at that whenever I see a sequel. Is this just a reboot or a remake to make more money on this franchise name? Well, kind of. This is one of those movies that reminds me why I don't always like grades. I grade movies because I always have and people enjoy like that summary of, of your thoughts. But a film like this, I'm very split on because I had no problem watching it. But under the surface, there's just so many things about it that bothered me because it basically is just a remake. I'm gonna give Ocean's 8 a C plus. If you guys do decide to see Ocean's 8 this weekend, let me know what you thought of it. I'm curious to hear other people's thoughts. Thank you so much as always for watching. And I also wanna say thank you so much to the sponsor for this video and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning platform and online community with thousands of classes. But in particular, and what interests me, is their classes on filmmaking, editing, animation, and writing. They have a very helpful course on do-it-yourself cinematography and DSLR filmmaking for beginners. Classes on how to vlog, film, edit, and upload to YouTube. As far as learning platforms go, Skillshare is definitely more affordable than most. Their annual subscription is less than $10 a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people who go to the link in the description below, if you'd like to learn more about Skillshare and what you can learn there, you can sign up and the first 500 people get their first two months free. So guys, thank you so much as always for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.